All right. All right. All right. All right. Let me know you are here. Let me know that you are here as you are jumping on. Uh, be sure to uh, go ahead and type a comment in the uh, in the comment section below. I will definitely give you a shout out. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, if you <clears throat> would be so kind to do us a favor and let's get uh, our teams, let's get our teams on here. Uh, tag your team. Let them know that we are live. We are live. We are live. I had to uh, uh, jump on tonight from our home office uh, only because. Uh, the kids are are uh, in bed, and so I did not want to go uh, to our office uh, away from the home, so I decided to come downstairs and uh, do this training tonight. So I am excited. My goodness, I am excited tonight to bring you this information, uh, but before we get started again, what I want you to do is tag your team let them know that we are live and i promise you i promise you tonight i'm gonna probably get you a little fired up tonight uh it's gonna be it's gonna be good it's gonna be really really good and um just make sure make sure we are getting our teams on and um <clears throat> uh, get them plugged in as you are jumping on go ahead and comment and let us know that you are here live in effect we will be getting started here in just a few minutes want to make sure I got everything prepared for you um, so so uh, until until uh, then or before we get started who seen which one of us seen the um, the big news that's getting ready to happen starting March 1st starting March 1st listen ladies it is an absolute game changer on what they announced uh, today be sure there go the queen. There's the queen live in the flesh. Hey there, my beautiful, beautiful queen. Um, so uh, the 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 announcement that the uh, uh, corporate office announced today was absolutely mind blowing, game changer. If you have not went and watched that video, I highly, highly encourage you to please go and do that um, just so you can be in tune to what's getting ready to happen. I'm telling you, it is a complete game changer, ladies, and uh, this is going to change the game completely, change the game completely. All I can tell you is get in position for what's getting ready to happen, all right? Get in position. So um, <clears throat> tonight, 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 if you saw in the caption uh, or for the title, it says lions, tigers, and bears, oh my. And if you are a um, uh, someone that is really, really uh, in tune to movies and stuff, you kind of know where I got this from, but I'm going to put a different spin on this thing. And so uh, if you are taking notes, you definitely, definitely want to uh, get out a pen and paper and you want to take some copious notes because I promise you that if you're tuning in tonight I'm going to change your paradigm I'm going to change the way you think about what's happening not only in your business but in your life I'm going to expose some things that will clearly show you why you are where you are and how you can get to where you need to be okay and so again tag your team let everybody know that we are live and uh, we will be getting started here in about 10 seconds. I'm going to get me a drink of water. Um, and uh, we'll get started. We will get started. All right. So, again, uh, welcome. Welcome to the, to the live tonight. And, uh, again, the title, the title, what we're going to be discussing tonight is a concept that I came up with called Lions, Tigers, and Bears. Lions, Tigers, and Bears, oh my, right? So here's the deal, okay? Um, if you know where that, that line came from, go ahead and put it in the, in the comments uh, below. 
Uh, but again, we're going to put a little spin on this. Okay, we're going to put a little spin on that. So again, if you know where that uh, line came from, then I want you to go ahead and comment in the uh, chat box below and let us know where did we get that from? Lions, tigers, and bears. Come on, let me hear it. Lions, tigers, and bears. Where did that come from? Where did that come from? <clears throat> All right. Lions, tigers, and bears. As you're jumping on, as you are jumping on, go ahead and chime in. Let us know you're here. Let us know you're here. <laughs> My queen said the children's book. Well, you you closed, but I don't know if it was a children's book. Um, yeah, well, I'm pretty sure they made a lot of, you know, children's books out of it, but it actually came from a movie. It came from a movie, and this is going to be uh, kind of like a hidden, well, it's not going to be hidden anymore, but a little uh, uh, secret of mine is actually uh, one of my favorite movies, one of them. Uh, anybody that knows me knows that I really like, uh, I like like gladiator kind of movies. I like those movies where like uh, uh, people, uh, maybe like the underdog or something comes back and he just saves the entire empire or something like that. Like I love those kind of movies where uh, it gets you fired up on the inside, gets you fired up. Hey, me, me, I see you. I see you. Cindy, how you doing? Good, good to have you, you ladies on tonight. Good to have you ladies on. Tag your team. Let them know we are here. Um, <clears throat> okay, so uh, so lions, tigers, and bears. Uh, for my movie buffs out there, it came from the classic movie Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz, okay? And the reason that I, I, I thought about this is because, again, one, it's one, of my, it's one of my favorite movies. And that's a little, I guess, a hidden secret of mine that I love that movie, Wizard of Oz. And I remember um, uh, back in high school, as a matter of fact, I had a humanities teacher that really, really changed the way I looked at movies, right? And so now... It's strange, you know, in a sense, but now I look at movies for the lesson that I can learn from it beyond just the entertainment, right? And so it was it was really interesting when I was watching this movie one time, uh, The Wizard of Oz, that so many different principles began to uh, jump out at me. Uh, very similar to when I was watching uh, The Lion King, for example. Um, uh, in 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 uh, my book, for example, I wrote an entire chapter on it because it made that type of uh, <laughs> impact. My, <laughs> I'm just now seeing uh, Ankh man. <laughs> oh, my queen, no, that wasn't it, boo. That wasn't it. Uh, but it was from Wizard of Oz. It was <laughs> it was from Wizard of Oz. But um, one of the things that struck me. One of the things that struck me about The Wizard of Oz is so many people were entertained by, you know, you got the scarecrow, you got the tin man, you got the, the, the lion or the cowardly lion and so forth. But there was a deeper message that I was able to gather from that. And that's what I kind of want to share tonight when we're talking about lions, tigers, and bears. I want to help you identify why you are where you are and how you're going to get to where you need to be. And most people don't even realize that this is where they are. And until you really get a hold of where you are, you will never be able to go to where it is that you're trying to go in your life. And so I want to put a spin on this and, uh, uh, and deal with it from this aspect, all right? So let's talk about this. If you remember in the movie, Dorothy was on the farm with her family, right? She was on the farm with her family. Of course, you had the black and white setting and, and so forth, but she was on the farm with her family in Kansas, okay? And in Kansas. And so, so we can get right into the training. I want you to identify for the sake of this training, Kansas is going to be your place of comfort. Understand this. She was very familiar with Kansas. She lived on the farm. She would go out and she would milk the cow. She would actually uh, gather the eggs for, uh, from the chicken. This was a routine that she would do every single day. But if you if you dig deeper into 
the 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 setting of this this uh, this phenomenal uh, uh movie there's a reason that they started off being black and white all right now if you know anything about theater sometimes what happens is the the director has to tap into the emotions of the viewer and one of the ways to do that is by implementing color certain colors will trigger a certain emotion within the viewer and so don't think it be uh, uh, don't think it's a coincidence that the movie started off in black and white okay because it was trying to depict a an emotion of sorrow trying to depict an emotion of uh, uh, of complacency but someone that wanted something more okay and so when we're talking about Kansas, some of us right now are in this place of Kansas. You're in this place of your comfort zone, and, and it takes a lot of times, it takes a shaking in your environment in order for you to do what you need to do in order to move from Kansas, which is your place of comfort, to a place of Oz, which is very unfamiliar to a lot of people, right? And so if you remember in The Wizard of Oz, uh, uh, a tornado came by and it literally uh, shook things up. Are, are you with me? It shook things up so much so where, remember, uh, uh, if I if I recall, Dorothy, um, she was in a room and she kind of got uh, knocked out. She hit her head on something and all of a sudden the, the, the dynamic of the, the 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 film begin to turn and you will see uh, things flying in the wind and so forth okay there was a reason that they did this there was a reason that they did this but now here's what I want to get to okay here's what I want to get to you are where you are right now in this place of Kansas Kansas because of what you think or how you think are you with me you are where you are right now because of how you think there's no way that you can deny that, okay? Now, I'm not saying that your past had nothing to do with it, but your your the way you currently think right now has everything to do with whether or not you're going to stay there. And so some of us are choosing to stay in this place of Kansas, this place of comfort, but we want something different. We want the colors to change on the screen, but we're not willing to uh, 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 endure a shakeup. We're not willing to... to, to to go through this stage where we are willing to do what's necessary in order for us to go in, in, in the direction of our dream. And so sometimes circumstances need to happen. Situations need to take place that's going to stir you up and make you do something that you wouldn't have normally done. And then it puts you in a place of Oz. It puts you in a place of unfamiliar territory where now it's either sink or swim. Come hell or high water, you have to do something different, right? The, the definition for for example, of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And so in order for you to come out of that place of insanity, theoretically speaking, you have to be willing to go to the place of Oz, which is the place of unfamiliar territory. All right. Now, here's what's interesting when it comes to this place of Oz. In this place of Oz, you're going to be met by people that will uh, 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 help you along the way, okay? And, and, and it's kind of like what we were talking about yesterday. Who are you allowing to speak into your ear? Who are you allowing to speak into your ear? So in the land of Oz, however, understand that God will strategically orchestrate people to uh, uh, come into your life that's going to challenge you to change the way you think about situations. They're going to challenge you to change your paradigm of thinking so you can get to where you really want to be. Understand this. Dorothy woke up or she thought she was awake and had no idea where she was. And I know that's where some of you guys or some of you ladies are right now is you don't know where you are. <laughs> right. And and and, and it, it should be encouraging to you because the land of unfamiliar territory is the sure path for you to reach your goals and your destiny. OK. And so let's talk about some of these characters. Let's talk about some of the, some of these people that's going to come into your life and how you can identify them and and how you can actually uh, uh, capitalize on what it is that they want to teach you so you can be where you need to be. The first person, right? The first person that Dorothy came across was the Scarecrow, right? Now, if you remember the Scarecrow, what was the Scarecrow's mission? What was it that the Scarecrow was after? If you remember, the Scarecrow was after the brains. The Scarecrow just wanted some brains, 
right? He just wanted to, to be able to think for himself. He just wanted to be able to uh, conjure up a thought. He just wanted to be able to process information. Now, what's interesting about the scarecrow is that like the scarecrow, we get stuck in this place of desiring information and we fall into this place of information overload. Now, here's the danger of being in this place of information overload. It's nothing wrong with getting information, but there is something dangerous about being in the place of information overload. What does that mean? That means that all you do is study, 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 watch a training watch this video jump on this webinar do this like everything is information 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 and what happens is it puts you in this place of information overload and when you get into this place of information overload you open the door of complacency in your life because see here is a cliche that people love to say and that is knowledge is power well, I partially agree with that, but there's another piece of that puzzle that most people are unwilling to admit. Knowledge is power, but it's only partial power. Let me say this again. Knowledge is power, but it's only personal or it's only partial power. What do I mean by that? It, 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 it serves you well to get the knowledge. It serves you well to get on the trainings. It serves you well to go to the seminars, to go to the workshops. But it becomes void if you take the information and do nothing with it, right? And so I was a victim of that. I would be a victim of just information overload. Like every time I got information, I would, would just pile it up over and over and over and over and over again, and I would get frustrated. I would get sick to my stomach because I realized that I have all of this information, but nothing is happening for me. And then I realized that knowledge in and of itself is not power, but it's the application of the knowledge that creates the results. What am I saying? You have to do something with the knowledge that you have. It's one thing to have a brain. It's another thing to, uh, 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 to, to implement what you learn. Are, are you with me? So yeah, we have a brain like the scarecrow. We, we, we can pursue to, to, to have knowledge. We can pursue to have a brain, but if you don't do anything with it, you won't get the results. Is this making sense? So you have to balance this out with applying what you are learning, right? You have to implement this thing. All right. So what was the next character? The next character, and this is where a lot of people are right now. This is where a lot of people are right now. The next person was the Tin Man. Some of you that are watching this right now fall into this category. You're the Tin Man. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean by this is, remember the Tin Man was after a heart. The Tin Man wanted a heart. He wanted nothing more than to be able to experience the emotions that people experience. He wanted a heart. Now, here's what's interesting. When it comes to your dreams, some of you are not committed enough. You're not committed enough. I was talking with a young person this morning, and I was sharing with them, most people claim that they want something, but their heart is not in it. Because if you really believed that you can have what you say you want, you would do what you need to do. Your heart got to be in this thing. Les Brown says you got to be hungry, right? And so many people claim to be hungry, but you look at the actions, you look at the steps that they take, you look at the daily routine that they're following every single day or the lack thereof, and you can identify whether a person is actually in this thing. It, like, are they, are they committed? Committed to this at the heart level. I, I listen. There was a time in my life when I spoke really well, <laughs> right? I, I can talk a good game. I can talk about all the things that I wanted to pursue, and and my 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 amazing wife, my my amazing wife had to call me out on it one time. She said, "You know, you talk real good, but let me see the results. Let me see this person that you say that you are. Let me see this person that that you claim that you were at some point." And so I had to get back into the saddle, and I had to get into this thing. I had to put my heart into this thing. I'm telling you, some of you are not committed like you say you are, because if you were committed like you say you were, then you would. Wake up thinking about your dream. You will take every step in pursuit of your dream. You will sleep 
thinking about your dream. You will eat your dream for breakfast, eat it for lunch, and you will eat it for dinner. There's nothing that will stop. A mentor shared this with me years ago. He said, there's nothing that can stop a man or woman who just will not quit. My question to you is how long ago did you quit on your dream? How long ago did you decide not to put your heart into it? All the tin man wanted was a heart. He wanted to experience the emotion. Some of us have not tapped into the emotion of what it will feel like to actually experience true time freedom, to actually experience financial freedom, to actually experience being able to be home with your family, to be able to experience what I like to call dart travel, where you can just simply throw a dart on the map and wherever it lands, you can say, honey, pack the bags, we're leaving in the morning. Some of us don't know what that feels like. And until you tap into the canvas of your imaginations and get there, put your heart into this thing, you will never experience it. Are you with me? Some of us gotta put our heart into this thing. Now, you have to believe in your vision. You have to believe in your vision. Ladies and gentlemen, understand this. If you don't believe in your vision, you cannot expect anyone else to believe in your vision. Why do you believe, why do you think that Beauty Visionaries was the name that was given to us to launch this movement? It has nothing to do with personal ambition. It was because we saw a vision of being able to impact thousands and thousands of families around the world. And because of that, we put our heart into this thing. We invest into this thing and we are sharing the message. We're sharing the vision of what this is all about because we are committed to it. We bleed this. We, we, we eat this for, for breakfast and lunch and dinner. Like there's no stopping this thing. Are you hearing me? So what's your dream? What's your vision? And is your heart in it? If your heart is not in it, what I would encourage you to do is go back to the drawing board and rediscover your why. Someone shared with me years ago that your why has to be so strong that every single day that you have not done something to move towards it, you should start shedding a tear. You should cry if every single day you're not moving towards your why. That's how powerful this thing has to be. You should lose sleep at night knowing that you did nothing to move forward in your dream. Where's your heart? Put your heart into this thing. The third, the third character that some of us are meeting right now, when we look in the mirror, is the cowardly lion. Some of us are too afraid to step out. Some of us are too afraid to tell other people about what we're doing. Some of us are too afraid to, 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 to go online and share what it is that you do. Some of us are too afraid to sit across from someone and share your vision. Some of us are too afraid to break the back of fear in your life. Understand this. Fear can be twofold, all right? Fear can be twofold. Scripture says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. I want you to think about this. Again, fear can be twofold. A lot of times, fear paralyzes people, but for the leader, fear will propel you forward. Why am I saying this? Because when you understand that fear is false evidence appearing to be real is what most people say. However, is it really false? Think about this. Is fear really false? If you get a bill in the mail tomorrow saying that uh, so in the, your, your lights will be cut off by such and such date, that's not false. That is <laughs> a fact that if you don't pay that bill, your lights will be shut off. So fear will begin to creep in if you're not careful. However, when you understand that there's an oxymoron to freedom, there is a way to break the back of fear, right? There's a way to break back the back of fear. And one of the ways to do it is just to pursue, just go forward in what it is that you say you want. Sometimes it's just taking one simple step towards that thing that you fear the most, quote unquote, that's going to remove the fear from your life. People ask me a lot of times, how is it that you uh, uh, appear to be so confident when you're, when you're speaking and when you're training? I said, be only because I understand that there 
is something brewing on the inside of me that if I do not release it, I rob the entire world of it. Was I afraid to do it? Absolutely. Absolutely. But the more I did it, the more I got in front of people, the more I was speaking in front of audience, the more I would go online, for example, and speak, the less fear would grab me. Sometimes it just, it, it, you just have to do it. You just have to move beyond this thing that's blocking you and do it anyway. Talk to that person that you think is going to tell you no. Rejection is good. It develops character. Go for it. Are you hearing me? You got to go for this thing. So, but let's talk about the oxymoron of freedom. I want to share uh, 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 something that my mentor, again, shared with me. And what he was sharing with me is that most people cry out for freedom, but most people can't handle freedom. And what he was saying was, when a person is sincerely or when they're truly free, then there's no more dependence on someone else. I give you a prime example. 95% of the population experiences only 5% of the wealth that exists on uh, on uh, uh, from the side of the economy, right? If you know anything about the book Rich Dad Poor Dad or or, or Cash Flow Quadrant, you will understand what I'm saying. You have the employee, self-employed, business owner, and investor, right? 95% of the population exists on the employee and the self-employed side. 95%. However, they only experience 5% of the wealth. Now, what's interesting is that every single one of those individuals can cross over into the business and investor side where they're experiencing 95% of the wealth. The problem is they're too afraid to move forward. And here's why. Because as an employee, you have things handed to you. Think about it. As an employee, you have things handed to you. One of the greatest concerns that people have in regards to not finding, quote unquote, a job is two things. One, how are they going to provide for their family money? Two, benefits. I want you to think about this. Money and benefits are the two leading fears that people have when it comes to employment. However, what they don't see under the under the bedrock of that fear of money and benefits health benefits is the fear that's keeping them shackled to this place of bondage here's what i mean <clears throat> as an employee you're told when to show up when to go on a break when to leave and if a project or a paper or whatever is not done, you're told that you have to stay until it's complete. You're told what to do. And you're willing to do it because if you don't, they remove those things that you fear the most. The lack of money and your benefits. How are you going to provide for your family? Interesting, right? However, for the business owner, he or she understands that it's all on them. Whether they make it or not is on them. They no longer can have the handout and say, can you give me this? No, no, no. They can't do that. Did I get knocked off? Hope not. Okay. So they can't do that, right? So what happens is this. Hopefully I didn't get knocked off. Are you guys still? I want to make sure you guys are still there. Can you hear me? <clears throat> Did I get knocked off? Let me know. Let me know. Can you guys still hear me? I want to make sure that you can hear me. Just got a phone call. Let me know that you guys can still hear me. You there? You there? Let me know you guys are still here real quick. Okay. All right. So, <clears throat> so in, in, in the land of freedom, as an employee, Again, everything is handed to you, okay? And, 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 and if you don't do what they told you to do, then you run the risk of losing the things that you fear the most. Again, money and benefits. However, as an, as, a, as an entrepreneur, everything is on you. If you make it, it's up to you. If you don't make it, it's because of you. Nobody is going to hand you anything. You literally have to go get it. 
And here's what my mentor was sharing with me. There's more of a burden to be free than it is to be in bondage. Because in bondage, everything is given to you. Everything is provided for you. Everything that you need is provided for you. However, when you're truly free, then you realize that you have to make this work. And there's no more handouts. So my question to you is, are you really free? Are you really free or are you utilizing the filters on Facebook? Are you utilizing the filters on Instagram? Are you utilizing the filters on Snapchat to tell people that you're free when you're really in bondage? Mm. See, the, the cowardly lion, one of the things that the cowardly lion had going for him is that he was very honest about where he was. He let people know, although he would say, I will fight you with one arm behind my back. <laughs> he also will let you know I'm too afraid. It's interesting, right? He would, 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 he would get ready to, to, to knuckle up with you. But when it was really time to, to throw down, he will let you know he was too afraid. And some of you right now are too afraid to move forward. Some of you are, are, are that cowardly lion. Too many people told you no. And so you just decide that you're going to hide under a bush and not pursue what it is that you say you want. However, when you bring these characteristics together, when you are able to apply the knowledge, when you're able to put your heart into this thing, when you're able to eradicate the fear from your life, now you're ready as Dorothy was in The Wizard of Oz. Now you're ready to meet the wizard. And what is the purpose of the wizard? The purpose and the place of, of, of meeting the wizard was the place of realizing your true potential. And this, my friends, is where you need to be. When you, when you start to realize your true potential, it is then that you realize that you had the things that you needed all along. Everything that you needed was already placed on the inside of you. You already have the wisdom and the knowledge to do what it is that you are, are, are seeking to do. You already had the heart. You already had the courage to go after it. It's been placed on the inside of you already. And so when you meet the wizard, when you're placed in a position where you have to realize your potential, that, my friends, is when you're going to see what it is that <clears throat> you're pursuing in your life. Are you with me? So like Dorothy, the, 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 the good witch of the East had to tell her, Dorothy, you could have went home all along. You just had to make a decision that you wanted to go home. Now, here's what's interesting. As adamant as she was about going back to Kansas, which was this place of comfort, Dorothy was not the same person anymore. Think about this. Once you remove yourself from this place of comfort, once you remove yourself from this land of familiarity and you move into this land of unfamiliar territory and, and, and you begin to develop all these characteristic, uh, characteristic traits that's going to get you to where you need to be, you can go back to the land that you were once comfortable uh, 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 in in a completely different state of mind. And it's at that point where the people that says that, that you would never make it will look at you and say, how did you do it? How in the world did you become the person that you are today? And you can just simply look at them and you can laugh and say, I made a decision. Ah, I made a decision to click my heels three times and say within myself, there's no place like home. My goodness, I hope y'all grabbing this. You can click your heels at any time and say, there's no place like home. There is no place like home. So my challenge to you, is to click your heels three times and say, there's no place like home. Do you understand that everything you need is already placed on the inside of you? Yes, you can be successful in business. Absolutely, yes. Why not? Just click your heels and remind yourself that there's no place like home, right? You have everything you need. It's placed on the inside of you to be everything that you've been created to be. My question to you is, are you going to become or remain the Dorothy that started off in Kansas, or are you going to become the Dorothy that was able to endure the land of the Oz? Click your heels three times. 
and repeat to yourself on a consistent basis that there's no place like home. We believe in you, we trust you, and we are so looking forward to hearing your story. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you got something out of this tonight. Feel free, share this message. Share this message, but more than anything, take the principles, and I want you to begin to apply them immediately. Remember, knowledge is only partial power. It's the application of that knowledge that's going to create the results that you're looking for. All right? So with that, we love you guys. We trust you guys. And let's go ahead and finish the month out strong. Good night, ladies.